Hi everybody, welcome back to Daisy. And in this video, I just want to share some XML snippets I've uploaded to my GitHub and my Mega that give you simpler, complete vehicles like this sedan here. So previously, you may well have used my files whereby you could spawn in complete vehicles like this. So they've got all the um, all the stuff with them. So if we go in the open up here, we can see, you know, we've got the battery, we've got the radiator, we've got the spark plug. Um, and uh, it's got all the doors and all that sort of stuff on. However, what used to happen is in the boot uh, or in the storage, there would be loads of other stuff. There would be like guns or fishing equipment or hunting equipment and a, uh, a jerry can of fuel. And with these files, you don't get all the other stuff. All you get is the jerry can of fuel. So you can take the jerry can of fuel out. You can refuel the vehicle. You then take the jerry can to go and find some water, come back. Fill the radiator if necessary, and you've got a running vehicle. I've done this because what used to happen on, I know my community servers, is that when vehicles were still full of stuff, <laughs> players were more likely to uh, hoard the vehicles, I think, anyway. And they're also more likely to kind of just get the stuff out and leave the vehicles, and it used to create kind of problems. So the idea is this is just, just simpler vehicles. Now, if you know what you're doing, if you look in the links below this video in the description, you'll find a link to my GitHub and my Mega, in case one of them isn't working. And there's only one file, it's just the readme, and that includes the instructions and a XML snippet that you're going to put into your CFG spawnable types that XML over the top of existing code and that just adds the chances to spawn everything in. I will go through that in a second and I'll show you how to do it on a local server and we'll show you how to do it on a remote Nitrado community server. This works for PC and console servers as well. But before we that, let's just go and have a look at another thing. So if we go and look at, say, uh, ooh, wrong, wrong admin tool. Let's go and have a look at a truck, just so I can show you that as well. Uh, where we got truck covered uh, orange. Let's go and have a look at this one. Go find one over here. So there we go. So as you can see, the truck's all there. It's got all the bits on, but when we have a look in the boot there's just some fuel nice and simple now remember the damage that the different bits of the truck has and the truck itself has is configured by editing the damage settings of the all the different items hello needs the handbrake on is it going backwards but i'm not going to cover that in here if you do a quick google search for how to manage damage in in daisy that that comes up and you'll be able to see that so let's just come out of here so we can see how things are done just close that down. Okay. So if we go to our local server first, and what I'll do is I will put a link in the description below this video about local servers. So if you're, if you're new to this, you might not know about local server. So you'll be familiar when you play Daisy, whether on console or PC, you, you fire up and you have the launcher, don't you? Um, in fact, let me shut this down. So you'll have the launcher, and this is the PC launcher, so it looks a little bit different from the uh, console one but the idea is the same and the fact that you have your official servers you can join and you have your community servers that you can join and these servers they all sit in server racks in net, uh, data centers kind of all over the world however on pc you can run a, a server on your own pc that you can then access from that pc um, and then you can test things out and it's really good for practicing doing changes and installing mods and checking things before you install them um, in the web, which takes time because you've got to upload stuff, restart servers, and also all th and things like that. Now, I'd recommend when you do this sort of thing, when you do use a local server, you do it for testing and practice and playing single player. It's very tricky if you want to use it as a public server, say with your friends and things, because you have to mess around with port forwarding. So, if you want to do that, put have a look in the description below this video, and there'll be a link to my how to install a local server on your PC as well. Um, but this is the files for the local server. Um, and it's very similar to a server in the cloud. You'll be re re um, recognizing things. It's just that it's in the Windows uh, File Explorer. So if we go into the missions on the server, and then we go into, in this case, daisy plus, but this works just as well for Sakal and Livonia and other servers as well, uh, other maps, because we're not changing the spawn rate or anything like that. We're just sport changing when something spawns in, what are the chances it spawns in with wheels and doors and things like that. So 
the file that controls this is your CFG um, spawnable types, which is this one here. So if I open this up, and I prefer to use Notepad++ um, as my choice of editor because it's all nicely color coded and you can see examples. And the way that spawnable types works is if you just kind of look down, um, scroll down, it does things like this. So if we look at a plate carrier, so if the plate carrier of S camo is due to spawn in on your server, and that's controlled by your types.xml, then um, it comes with that damage, and it's got an 85% chance of having a plate a holster with it, and an 85% chance of having pouches with it. So this this is what spawnable types does. It says if this thing spawns in, it has this chance of spawning this other stuff in with it. Um, so if we scroll all the way to the bottom, past all the zombies and all sorts of other stuff, you'll then get to, he says, eventually, the vehicles. I suppose I could have just searched for it, can I? Christmas. Bum, 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 bum. There we go. Then we have vehicles. And then we have all the vehicles um, entries. Now, this has already been changed, but your one won't say, it will say something like boat 01 black, Attachment chance point not point not five maybe or something like that, and then spark plug and then another percentage. Basically, one means definitely spawning with this, um, and then chance is definitely spawning with this. So, for example, um, this means that the spark plug attachment definitely spawn in and definitely spawn in. But if I was to change that say to like not point five, there would then be a fifty percent chance of chance of that spark plug spawning in. Um, on that particular boat and that's the way it works so as you can see there's entries where all of the chances have been changed to one just not my mic there so if you go to my um, github repository and you can just copy and paste from the repository itself or on mega you may want to download the file or you can download it on uh here we go where are we you could uh, okay let's just say okay Oh, I was editing this actually because there was a there we go. that should say oh no it is a mod yeah commit changes commit changes there we go so if you just go over to the link and then click on the code button and download zip it will download it I mean it's only a readme text file so it doesn't take up much much memory at all and you can see here we've got the entry so all we need to do is just go down Copy all of this all the way to the bottom. Dunk. Copy that. And then on my server, just over the top of the existing ones, go down. Oop, bit too far. And we would then paste that onto there. And then we would save that. Now, what I really recommend you do is you then go to uh, an XML validator. And what this does is it checks the the syntax of your file or the spelling of the file. So is it in the right? Is everything in kind of in the right um, order? Um, there will be errors that this can't pick up. But if you've done something like missed off a bracket or duplicated a bracket, it can spot things. So it's something you should should always do. So now I go to my server. Where is it? Daisy server. Go into the missions. Daisy Offline.Generous Plus. Uh, where are we? CFG spawnable types. And then I click validate. And no errors are found. Excellent. The most common thing people do is when you when you copy and paste in, is right at the beginning or right at the end, you won't have quite selected the right bit. So you'll do something like that. So you won't include one of the brackets or you'll miss it off or you're pasting in the wrong place. And by doing that XML validation, you can just just check that so now if I restart my local server the vehicles will be complete with all the bits on them now if you're doing it remotely and we're using a nitrado server as an example here we're going to go to our, our account we're going to go to the web interface for the particular server we want to work on and we want to go to uh, tools we want to go to file browser and then go into your PS missions or XB missions for Xbox or just missions on a PC server and then the particular mission, so Chernerus plus for Chernerus, Enoch for Livonia, Sakal for Sakal. 
and then we go into it and as you'll see in here we have cfg spawn up types just there now the best practice for editing files is to download them and edit them just like we did, did then in an xml in, in a in something like notepad plus plus or notepad and then check them with an xml validator afterwards and then once we've done that we then just, where's the upload? You upload that file over the top of the existing one on your server and then restart your server and those changes will start to take place. Just remember that it will take time for the new vehicles to start replacing the old ones. However, I know lots of people out there um, don't have access to a PC to edit their files. So you can, if you just click on it, it will open it up in your browser. And then what you can do is you can then scroll down can we make this any bigger yeah and we can scroll down to the bottom find the vehicles oh where they are so there's the vehicles and as you can see this server's already been done but then we could copy and paste from the github repository over the top of the existing entry from underneath vehicles right until the bottom before we get to the uh, here we are. That one there before V3S chassis, and then um, you just paste that, re uh, save the changes, restart the server, and then you'll be good to go. The danger of doing it like this within the web browser is very easy to make mistakes because, as you can see, nothing's color coded, and you don't have the opportunity to use an online XML validator to check your file before you um, restart the server. So if you accidentally like lift leave off <coughs> excuse me a uh, a bracket at the end or any other simple mistake which is very easy to do you won't spot that and you go back into your server maybe everything will seem fine to start off with but then things will start to go wrong and the, one of the things you'll learn when you do start editing um, uh, servers is that just because you've made a mistake in one particular part of your code the error may well be uh, become apparent in a different uh, thing that happens on the server so you might make a mistake in your cfg spawnable types when it comes to vehicles but then it turns out that something like zombies stop spawning in with loot because that file is has been corrupted and there's a cascading error that happens within that file but anyway you see how easy that one is um, i thought i'd share it because it's simple vehicles if you have a problem with people stripping vehicles for for their gear and just leaving them then maybe this will help or maybe you don't want to make it incredibly easy for players on your server by having lots of stuff in the boot like i had in my previous files with this one they're just getting the vehicle they're getting the fuel then they need to go and find the water if appropriate obviously the, the truck doesn't need water uh, fill the radiator and then they can use the car so there we go that's enough from me hopefully you found this useful if you have hit like you want to see more of the same press subscribe and of course i'll see you again soon